Hey YouTube family and GN subs, I hope you're doing well. We got some great information for you today, uh, all about adjudication. How long is it taking for that new PIP to be adjudicated? I got some answers for you. Are they still waiving employment-based interviews? And how long is the adjudication process taking? Uh, I'm gonna go through some real-time cases that I've been working on in my office. And then we're gonna go into also adjudications at the US consulates abroad. I had a recent case in Fiji. Let me tell you what happened and I'm gonna tell you how to appeal. Very simple and it actually worked. It's unbelievable. Uh, and then uh, lastly, we're gonna tell you about the new cases that are being adjudicated by USCIS. You will be surprised. So stay to the end and uh, find out exactly what cases you might wanna start considering, all right? All right, so a lot to get to. Let's get at it. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Umberto R. Gray, attorney here in Los Angeles. I have clients globally uh, and worldwide, and uh, I just love practicing immigration law. You can probably tell by my energy. So I'm known as the good news guy. Let's get at this good news today, all right? All righty, let's talk a little bit about the adjudication process at the U.S. Consulates Abroad. I had a recent case. It was a diversity case. Now, note, on the diversity cases, you need to have your case approved by October 1st or you lose the number. And it doesn't matter why. I know during COVID, there was some litigation uh, because a lot of diversity applicants, they lost out because appointments were canceled and they couldn't be rescheduled before October 1st and they lost the visa, they lost the litigation. It is a hard line. So my client started the process uh, at the U.S. Consulate interview in July. I figured, you know, Three months is going to be plenty of time to get this thing squared away and the green card issued. My client was in the United States in 2022, filed a derivative asylum case before her B1B2 expired, right? And what that means is she cannot start accruing unlawful presence uh, under 212A9. The consulate, what they usually do is when there is a status issue, they double check with DHS, Department of Homeland Security in the US to determine the, the actual status. So it took them 30 days. They came back and they said DHS told them that my client was out of status when she entered the US in 2022 because she had filed an asylum case back in 2020. Well, this is ridiculous because my client wasn't even in the US in 2020, all right? She visited in 2016, left after two months, visited in 2018, exited, went back to Fiji, commenced work, she was with her family, etc. came back to the US in 2022. So clearly a mistake by DHS. The problem is State Department cannot adjudicate the case if DHS says that there's a problem, right? So what do you do? This is an old trick, folks, because I've done this for a long time. I'm gonna put a link in the description box below for LegalNet. This is where you can make an appeal to Washington, D.C., the bosses of the consulates, right? And you can request for an advisory opinion. The advisory opinion has to be based on law and not on fact. So any factual finding they won't look at, but a lawful one they will. And I told them my client legally was not subject to 212A9 because she wasn't even in the United States. And please, LegalNet, contact DHS and have them change the finding. It's rare that it's done, but it happened, folks. They changed the finding. And as a matter of fact, last week I was notified that the visa would be issued. Great news, right? And uh, mid-August, we got plenty of time. She actually got the visa and her passport. She's going to just continue her visit for another couple of weeks and then head back to the United States with a green card. That is wonderful news and a good tool to use legal net. All right, let's talk a little bit about what applications are being adjudicated at USCIS where there is an increase recently has been in STEM applications. Specifically, STEM applications through what's called Schedule A Group 2 and NAW, National Interest Waivers. I've done some really good videos on this. It's a little tip, the Schedule A Group 2, you haven't heard about it before. They've expanded it to STEM. Check it out, it's gonna be useful to you. I use it for my clients. I've had wonderful results. Of course, NIW, the National Interest Waivers, no job offer required. They've been rolling out, they've been increasing, they've been adjudicating them, and they have approved them. All right, let's talk a little bit about employment-based interviews and adjudication times. 
Let me show you here. I'm going to pull this up. This is a recent approval that I got. Four months, folks. Look at the dates here on the left-hand side. Unbelievable timing. Waiver of interview. Look at the right-hand side here. It's an employment-based uh, petition uh, approval. So, hey, employment-based cases are still being rolled out, approved in record time. Family-based cases as well. I am finding that they are waiving final interviews and approving uh, cases where there are no issues with regard to criminal records or other such grounds of inadmissibility. So, hey, it looks like we're still seeing this trend. That is good news. I remember years ago, I was the first to tell you that they're going to start waiving final interviews, and they have. So they continue that, which is really good. I'm happy about that. All right, the new keep families together policy that Biden has rolled out, the new parole in place. You've probably been hearing about this. So I've had several cases this week and the law was just published on Monday uh, this week, uh, as well as Ayla's reporting adjudications within hours, folks. I had one that came back in four hours approved. How is this happening when, when there's a requirement of biometrics, right? Uh, how, how, how are they doing this? Well, number one, since the application is online, I find that I've uploaded good evidence of the 10-year physical presence requirement. I think that's key. I like, from January of 2014 to present, three items of evidence per year you can show and upload, right? Because if they get solid evidence that you've been here, they're going to prove it much faster. Um, so three items of evidence for each year. I do taxes, uh, maybe lease agreements, uh, uh, maybe licenses from the DMV, etc. Then your golden, your case is going to be approved. Hopefully it's going to stay this way. We don't know. It's going to be a lot of applications. So it may not be record time, but hey, you know what? It may happen. And now the reason that they could adjudicate these within hours without the biometrics is because they reused the biometrics that were previously taken. For example, my clients, most of them that apply for this PIP applied for an I-601A waiver, which required fingerprints. So the I-601A requires biometrics. So USCIS actually reused the biometrics that were taken in connection with the I-601. So that's how we had a speedy adjudication, all right? Hey, thanks so much for watching Gray Law TV. Click below, like, and subscribe. Thank you so much for all your wonderful comments. And uh, look at the playlist. Look at the frequently asked questions. There's some good stuff there, folks. It's free. Educate yourself. You are a smart YouTube family, GN subs. And uh, we will see you next week, all right? Take care and have a wonderful week.